What's up everybody, it's AJ with eTrailer.com. Today we're gonna be checking out the Yakima Stage 2 platform style bike rack. It's gonna hold two bikes and let's check it out. Taking a closer look at it, I said it's a platform style bike rack. That usually means the bikes sit on a platform. It's gonna be held by the wheel, so the hooks come down on the wheel, so there's not gonna be any frame contact. I really like that. Now when it comes to the platform style bike racks, there is different ways that it's gonna hold the bike. And some of the things that I look at or highlights that I'm looking for in those platform styles is how it tilts, how easy that is, if it does tilt or fold up, how it goes in the hitch and how easy or hard that is as well. And then how it holds the bikes. So I kinda already talked about how it holds the bikes by the wheels and not the frame. Cause some platform styles have that center mass right here where the hook would come down the frame of the bike. And those work, but I don't like those cause they make the frame contact and that center mass is kind of in the way sometimes. This wheel held version is far better cause you can see it's holding by the wheels. There's nothing here to get in the way. So when I go to load on the bikes or take the bikes off, I don't have to dodge around anything. Now another thing that I'm gonna look at and we'll look at more later is the handle. So the handle's gonna be at the end of the bike rack. So that's pretty handy to just do that, lift up, pull back on the handle and tilt it away versus some other bike racks. So some of the cool out ones come to mind is where there's gonna be like a lever back here. So you'd have to kind of kick back there to tilt it down or the U-shaped design on the transfer, you can walk up there, you still have to kick it, which is fine, but you're kind of under the bike rack when you're kicking that and going to tilt it down. So I don't like that as much. I like that the handle's out here towards the end. So that's gonna be another highlight we'll look into later on. And there's no tool install on this one, so you can just throw it in the hitch and tighten it with this knob at the bottom. As I mentioned it as one of my highlights, let's get right into how the handle works. So I'm happy that the handle's out towards the end of the bike rack, but it is a little tough to use just because it's a little bit shallow. You can only really get your fingertips in there to pull back on the handle and the handle is kind of stiff. So I'm gonna go underneath using my hand and I'm gonna have to lift up just a little bit on the bike rack to disengage the handle. That makes it a little bit easier. So up and you pull out and once that's pulled out, now it'll tilt away. So I'll just come down here and it stops right about there. Now let's hang out down here for just a second and see how it tilts away. So with being down here, it's actually nice. I like that the handle's out here because I'm away from the bikes. It's pretty far away actually. So sometimes when you tilt this down, you're kind of under the bike rack and that'd be kind of a pain to get out. You have to kind of dodge a handlebar or something when you're standing up and moving out. But that was far enough away. It wasn't an issue to look up and hit anything. So I like that. Now another thing would be coming back down to lift it back up. Isn't so bad. There's nothing really to grab onto. I guess you could grab this post over here to help you out if you wanted to lift it back up but we'll do that in a second let's actually open the back hatch just to show that we got clearance looks like we're gonna be just fine here so that way we can get into the back of our vehicle and get something out of there or throw something in there if we forgot and our bikes are fully loaded we don't have to go through the process of taking everything back off just to get to the back so now we'll tilt it up like I said you could do it one-handed down there or you can kind of grab this hook too to help you push and pull it up into place. What you're gonna do is you're gonna lift off on it. And it seems like you have to go a little bit higher than you think you do and then drop it back down into place because I couldn't get it to lock right back in automatically. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna grab the handle, lift up. And so right about here is where it should go into place and it starts you, you can kind of hear it click. So you can bring it back down and it slides in the rest of the way. Something to keep in mind with most bike racks that are in your hitch, it is gonna cover up your backup camera, so that's just something to be aware of. And if you throw it in reverse, it might beep because it senses it right there. Taking a look at the bike rack from the side, I just wanted to show you that it is stadium style. So the bikes, one bike's gonna be more elevated than the other one. We can see our mountain bikes a little bit higher up than the e-bike, which works out when you're loading those bikes, it's gonna be less likely to make any contact. You can see the handlebars are nowhere near each other. They're not in the way of the seats. You're not gonna to have to adjust too much to get both the bikes to sit. Sometimes when they are both level, those are issues you'll run into on those platform style bike racks, but I do like the stadium style. Now it was, a little weird to get the e-bike up and over into place because you had to go up and over this one a little bit higher to drop it in. That can be bad for some people, but there is also an optional ramp that you can get. It doesn't come with this. You have to buy that separately, but that'll go on the side and you can walk the e-bike up the side. Makes it easier to load that up. Another great thing about the stadium style is that this bike's gonna be up higher off the ground. So that means you're less likely to have any ground clearance issues. So if you're going on those steep hills or driveways, you don't have to worry about it bottoming out. Cable locks are included with the stage two. So that's nice that they are integrated. So you can pull 
about 24 inches out of here. The only thing is it's not quite long enough sometimes to go through the frame. You see, it's a little bit lacking there. I could go through the center here instead to lock it up that way. I know most of the time you wanna go through the frame to protect that, but then it attaches to itself right here and I got the key to lock it up. So it's nice that it's included and key to like to the knob at the bottom. So you only have to have these two keys that come with it and that can lock all the locks on here. Something else to go with the cable lock. So if you have the issue of, okay, that's not long enough. It's not gonna be able to work for me. You can come down here and there's gonna be a loop that you can add another cable lock that you'll have on your own. You'll have to get that separately, but it does have this loop here to run another cable lock. That way you can go right through the frames. Before I take the bikes off the bike rack, let's go ahead and take it out in the parking lot and see how it handles. I'm gonna watch that side to side movement on those bikes. There's always gonna be a little bit of movement. Looks like it's going back and forth a little bit, but not too bad. Now we're in the open part of the parking lot. I can go a little bit faster and go left and right pretty quickly and aggressively and see how it handles there. A little bit of movement on the bikes, but not a lot at all. Back from the test course, we saw that the aggressive bumps did have the bike rack going up and down a little bit. That's normal. Their bikes didn't move though. They were strapped down and held pretty tightly on the sharp turns. They also stayed in place. Now we're gonna move these bikes so we can take a closer look at the bike rack. Taking a closer look at the cradle, we can see that center groove I was talking about for road bike tires, then it opens up for mountain bike tires and e-bike tires as well. In total, it works with tires up to 3.25 inches wide. So just check that out before you load that bike up on here. The other cradles we have are sliding, so it can adjust to different wheel bases. So that's gonna be helpful for those different bike sizes. You can always adjust this wherever you need it along here, just to make sure it straps down that back tire. Now we'll look at the back wheel strap. This is gonna be adjustable, so you can slide it up and down the tray wherever you need it, because this whole rack's gonna work with wheel bases up to 52 inches. The whole bike rack has a sturdy steel construction with a black powder coat finish, so that's gonna help it resist to the elements. You don't have to worry about leaving it on the back of your vehicle. If there's a storm or something, the elements aren't gonna bother it. Now let's get some measurements real quick. So using the tape measure, I'm gonna go from the center of the hitch pin hole all the way out to the end of the bike rack. It's be about 41 and a half inches. It adds to the back of the vehicle, so that's quite a bit. Now it can fold up to the vehicle, and I'll do that in just a second, but let's get ground clearance real quick first. So from the ground to this handle here, it's gonna be about 31 inches to the bottom of the rack, maybe a little bit lower here, 30 and a half right there. So that's quite a bit of space there. That's nice because it gives you that elevation like we talked about earlier of those steep hills and driveways. You're not gonna worry about bottoming them out. Now to save you some space, you can pull in this handle and fold the bike rack up towards the vehicle. It goes right into place there. Now let's get a measurement and how much space that saves you. So from the center of the hitch pin to the end of the rack, it's gonna be about here at 15 inches. So that's quite a bit less. So it'll be nice to fold that up when your bikes aren't loaded. If you don't feel like taking it off of there, and it'll take up quite a bit less space. Another highlight of mine, like I said earlier, is how it's gonna be able to be put into the hitch. So we got the hand knob here that's kind of anti-rattle device built into it. So we got the pin that's pushed into place, just right there in the hitch pin hole. What we do is, I'm gonna loosen this to show you disengaging that anti-rattle. It's got that nice grip around the outside too that makes it easy to turn the knob. I'll show you, with it loosened, that's how much movement you would have. So luckily, this knob is all you gotta do is turn this tight. Again, easy to grip, I like that part. There's nothing in the way of the knob either. So I can get my whole hand on there, get good turns on there to make sure it gets really tight in that hitch. You can see I can move the whole vehicle back and forth. There's no shaking or movement here in the hitch. So it really does take that up. I like that I don't have to use any tools to do that too. It's really just put the bike rack up in there, pop this pin in, and then turn this to tighten it down. Another thing is it's got a built-in lock, which again is same as your cable locks are included. So you're gonna use that same key to lock this up. Now this free spins, that means nobody can mess with this when you're not around with it locked up. So that means they can't get the bike rack out of the hitch. And if you have cable locks too, you can lock at the same. That way they can't mess the bikes on the rack. Overall, I like the bike rack. 
So the highlights I mentioned up front, now that I've spent the day with it, the handle being out here is nice. The handle itself, I'm not a huge fan of. It's a little bit to pull up on it and get in a place with it fully loaded, lifting up a little further than you think you have to to drop it down. Once you get used to it, isn't so bad. Again, at least the handle's out here. It's not a pedal that you have to kick all the way back here and kind of be under the bikes. When I did tilt it away, once you get used to that handle, you're not underneath the bike. So I did like that part of the tilting away because so many of them, when you tilt it down, you can kind of get trapped under there. It's kind of hard to get out of the way. So that part was good. So the stadium style bikes I liked as well, just because they didn't get in the way of each other, but loading that e-bike was a little difficult, lifting it up and in over that top one. But if that is a huge issue, you can get that ramp add on and then you can just walk it up the ramp. So that kind of solves that problem on its own. One thing I did like, putting it in the hitch and having that tighten knob here, the speed knob to tighten it down and not use any tools. I like that, that was definitely a highlight of mine, just knowing that I don't have to use any tools. I could get that anti-rattle, turn that, get a good grip on that and get it nice and tight in that hitch and not worry about my bikes. And then of course, the wheel hooks work just fine too. The rubberized, they pulled on there really tightly. I like how they ratchet into place with the wheel straps on the back. I wasn't worried about the bikes at all. Well, I think that does it. Thanks for hanging out and hope this helped.